If you're writing a modal piece and it's of any length, you're probably not going to stay in just one scale for the entire piece. Just like in tonal music where you would modulate, we can also do modal modulation. There's different ways to do this. Within the same family of modes, we can either modulate by keeping the same notes and changing the tonic, or we can keep the same tonic and change the intervals. The first example then is going to be example 7. This is an example of change of mode on the same tonic. Let's listen to example 7. As we can see, this mode starts in Dorian mode, goes to Phrygian, but Phrygian on D, the same tonic as at the beginning, and then finishes in Phrygian on D. Let's see how that works in detail. The beginning makes the Dorian clear with the B natural. That B natural is what gives the mode its, the mode its flavor. It's repeated in measure 2, which makes more of it. Now watch how the modulation takes place. We start off with the same chords. So this phrase, this part of the phrase, began in Dorian. When we get to the third and fourth bars of this phrase, we'll see that our transition is affected simply by using the E-flat, which is what we need to get into Phrygian, as a non-harmonic tone. So we start in Dorian. E-flat, now Phrygian, and then tonic and Phrygian. If you think about it, the difference between Dorian and Phrygian is one flat, E flat. So that's the one I just reproduced. After that, what next thing I do is I repeat that again, but I make the E flat more prominent. The first time I just sort of snuck it in. Now it's going to be the climax of the phrase. So by having that at the climax, that E flat, which is in both outer parts and the highest note in the phrase, it makes it very prominent and you feel the Phrygian cadence, you feel the Phrygian color even more. Then I make the same cadence I made before and sum it up into whole chords. So that's how we do the modulation. Notice that I had one accidental to change, I brought it in gradually and then I repeated it several times to make it more convincing and the cadence is clearly in the new mode. The second kind of modal modulation is change of tonic, but the same mode. When we'll see example 8, in example 8 we go from G mixolydian to C mixolydian and then return to G mixolydian. In other words, this is rather like tonal music where it's the same mode, but we just change the tonic. So that's going to give a slightly different feeling. This piece is going to start and end in the same place, but there will be a change in the middle. Let's just look at the two modes in the abstract to be clear. G mixolydian is like a major scale but without the leading tone. So C mixolydian would be the same thing starting on C but with a B flat instead of a B natural. As we look through example 8 and as you listen to it, notice where the B flat arrives and how it disappears. Example 8. In this case, we'll look at in detail how I arrange to have the B flat arrive. 
In principle, I'm going to be talking more about how to make these modulations gradual, simply because a, some, a, a sudden modulation is very easy to do technically. It doesn't take any special skill just to bump into somewhere else, into a different mode. It takes more skill to make it gradual. So, in this piece, the first phrase is simply to establish G mixolydian. And if you look at measure four, the cadence, Well, that G mixolydian has to have that F natural, and there it is, right at the cadence. Measure four, five. Now, in measure six, the next chord is this. So, measure five, measure six, two notes the same, D and G. The B natural has now become a B flat, and the bass has gone from G to F, but then it goes down. So it's like the bass is doing a scale. Let's listen to measure five and six again. So, by changing one accidental and keeping other notes the same, I've created a kind of glue that holds the modulation together. After that, the piece goes on for quite a while with the B-flat, and the B-flat becomes more and more prominent. You can see it's, it becomes uh, not exactly a suspension, but it's held over in measure 8. It's in the bass in measure 9. It is a suspension in measure 10. There's a cadence in measure 11 and 12, which is very clearly in C mixolydian. Let's listen to that cadence, 11 and 12. Again, the B-flat going to C. So at this point, we're pretty firmly in C mixolydian. The piece then goes on for a little while, but the next change comes in measure 15. In measure 15, for the first time since we modulated into C mixolydian, the bass now has a B-natural. Here's the end of measure 14 and measure 15. That note on the bass is what's new, and that's what tells us we are no longer in C mixolydian, because C mixolydian would have a B flat. Also notice that for a couple of chords before that, while I'm quote unquote modulating, notice that I'm avoiding chords with that note. Since the B flat and the B natural are the notes that are different between the two modes here, those are the notes that I want to be careful of not juxtaposing too closely. So by giving myself a little space with neutral chords, like measure 13, no B, no B flat. Now the B natural arrives, but there, now we're modulating back. So by creating a sort of a neutral space, we can do what in tonal music would be called a pivot chord. Okay, the piece then goes on from there to the end and stays in G mixolydian to the end. So I won't go into all the details. I'll just notice that the cadence at the end makes a point of emphasizing that lower seventh degree. It's not, but. Now let's look at example nine. Of the three kinds of modal modulation, this is the third kind. This is a modulation where we're changing both the mode and the tonic. In this case, we're modulating from B-flat Lydian to C Locrian. Here are the two scales, B-flat Lydian, C Locrian. As we can see, there are five flats difference, four flats difference, pardon me. Okay, so that means from the simple B flat in the Lydian mode, we now have to add E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat to get into Locrian mode. And we also have to establish, have to establish C as the tonic. Let's listen to example nine. As we can hear, this example establishes Lydian mode very clearly at the beginning with the E natural. So that sounds like a B flat major scale, but with an E natural. That's repeated in the next bar, and up to the beginning of measure three, there's no real change in the mode. Now the key thing is that with all these alterations that have to be changed, they have to be done gradually, one at a time. The first two bars here are Lydian, established with the B flat chord and then the E natural. 
Measure two doesn't add any new accidentals, just repeats the Lydian sound. Then we get to measure three. Now I'm going to play from measure three through to measure six, just pointing out the new accidentals as they arrive. So in measure three, the G and the B flat, these are already there, they're new, they're not new. Then we come to the E flat in measure four. Notice that the E flat comes while I keep the notes in the right hand the same. G, B flat. So E flat. As that resolves in the third beat, now we have the new note, D flat. But again, the F and the B flat are familiar. So we're not changing everything at once, and whenever there is something changed, there's always a familiar note at the same time. Next bar, measure five. Now I add the A flat into the bargain. So now we have only one accidental left to get to the Locrian. I need to add a G flat, and that comes the last beat of bar five. Now, in terms of accidentals, I've arrived at where I need to be for Locrian mode. However, the tonic is not installed yet. So now, measure six and seven are just going to act as cadence material to establish the Locrian mode. When I do, Notice the voice leading is basically landing on C, which is the new tonic, and then it repeats something like it. So that repetition and the arrival on the strong beat clinch the arrival in Locrian mode. Notice that Locrian mode, since the tonic triad is diminished, I use the tonic triad without a fifth, only the third. And that's the third kind of modal modulation. So, when you have to do a modal modulation, the first thing you do is, you have to simply determine how far do you have to go. What's the distance between the two keys? How, much, how many accidentals have to change? Determine common tones, if there are any, and use the common tones as neutral terrain. And if you want to do it gradually, which is the hardest thing to do, make sure you don't introduce more than one element at a time. For example, if I had introduced at the same time two or three new accidentals, let's suppose I did measure three and four like this. It's too fast, so it makes it more bumpy. You might want that in the piece occasionally, but it's still a much more dramatic effect. Once the modulation is affected, it's usually a good idea to confirm the new area with the strong directed progression that's characteristic of the mode. Okay, now we come to other kinds of problems. In tone music, for example, as you know, we can keep a phrase in the same key, but nonetheless have it colored with occasional chromatic notes. You can do that with modes as well. Let's listen to example 10. As we can see, example 10 is in the Lydian mode on F, and it stays there, but there's one note at the end of measure 3 which is not in the Lydian mode. That's that E flat. Listen to measure 3. That E flat is not in the mode, but it's clearly an ornament for the D, and the fact that it doesn't appear again tells us it's just a local event. It isn't really a change of mode. So you can use modes with the same kind of flexibility. You can use major and minor keys. You don't have to stick in the mode 100%. You have to make sure that it's clear enough. In this case, the Lydian mode is clear because the motive at the very beginning emphasizes the raised fourth degree and the cadence at measure five and six also emphasizes the same mode. So if you want to use chromatic alteration, make sure the mode is clearly defined in advance. Be careful about avoiding the tritone's directional pull toward the wrong key. It should be very temporary, and usually it's not a good idea to alter the chromatic characteristic notes. For example, in Lydian, if I'd altered the B-flat, the Lydian character would go away completely. So I don't play with the B-flat, but the other notes I can play with. <laughs> 